tonight is the fourth Democratic debate, and CNN is inexplicably trying to cram 12 candidates onto the stage. Uh, the, t the two polling leaders, Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren, who are neck and neck in some polls, they're in the 20s. B Biden is somehow still uh, leading in most of the polls. Bernie Sanders, who is solidly in third, and the only other candidate with double digits in polling averages, it, it rounds up the top three. Uh, then there's a huge drop off to the five percenters, as I like to call them, Pete Buttigieg and Kamala Harris. Averaging in the two percentage points are Beto O'Rourke and Andrew Yang. Uh, Cory Booker and Amy Klobuchar are at around 1.5, 1.6% in polling averages. Then Democratic mega donor Tom Steyer, uh, he's making his first appearance in the debate. He's also somehow showing up on polls. I don't know who wants to vote for him. Uh, and then there's Julian Castro at 1%, then Tulsi Gabbard at the bottom with 0.8%. In case all those numbers were a bit overwhelming, here's a visual indication of where each of the candidates are in the real clear politics polling average that takes into account all of the polls. And now that Elizabeth Warren is a polling front runner, one of the top two candidates in polling, expect there to be a lot more pointed questions directed at her, her. so um, rightly so, by the way. So uh, here are some of my predictions, and you guys can come back, see if I was right, see if she take me seriously at all, although this is a huge crapshoot, so keep that in mind. Um, I do expect a lot of corporately framed questions about electability or how Medicare for all will raise taxes, although it'll save you money, even though it's in tax form. Yawn. In an ideal world, Elizabeth Warren would be asked, I guess what I would ask her if I, if I was the moderator, one, about her military budget record. That's a huge, huge question mark. I've already asked her about that, about that and I did get an answer. Two, uh, about some of her inconsistencies on Medicare for All, especially on her website, like the private insurance aspect about mental health care. Mental health care is health care. I would want to ask her about that. She has so many plans that there's so much conflicting stuff and it's hard to tell. Not so much conflicting stuff, but th there's, there's conflicts. Three, also about her big donor money stance in the general. Um, she's now said she won't take big donor money. She had previously said that she would, and then there was some weird message her campaign put out to appease the Democratic Party. I bet that last one will be asked, but from the perspective of how refusing big donor money in the general, isn't that going to hurt you against Trump? Isn't that going to hurt the Democratic Party? They might ask that, but it's going to be from that perspective, the, the CNN moderator. So uh, they won't question some of her inconsistencies from a leftist perspective. They'll go after her strong progressive positions as if they're a bad thing. That's really the theme we're seeing in, in the corporate media. And of course, we'll see if I'm, if I'm right about that. Um, Biden now. So <laughs> what cannot be asked of Biden? Support for segregation or really support for not busing. That's not fair, but not believing in busing is supporting segregation of schools, pushing for the crime bill, pushing for the bankruptcy bill, voting for the Iraq war, not remembering anything and not having any policy ideas and on and on. So there will likely be softball questions about Ukraine and his son, which I think is just like the most softball thing you could do for, for Biden because he always just wants to pit himself against Donald Trump to say I'm the most electable. That's what the entire campaign is propped on is name recognition and the perception of electability. So um, if he can pit himself against Trump in that regard, the crowd will cheer. But I would ask him this simple question. So Obama said Medicare for all was a good idea. Do you agree with him? Well, what is it, Joe? I thought you loved Obama. I thought you said a prayer for him every night. Barack, have, have you mentioned that in the past five seconds? I thought he was your yas. King meme buddy, where you lick ice cream cones with him in your aviator sunglasses. Look, I, I doubt the moderators will ask that question, but uh, per usual, I wish they would. For Bernie, for tough questions for Bernie, look, you know, he gets it from a right-wing perspective all the time. I think it's a fair question to ask. You have a really strong base of support, of hardcore supporters, and they're not moving, right? high teens, he's gone up into the 20s at some points, but he, he has a really high floor. But in terms of his ceiling of expanding his voter coalition, how are you going to expand with so many candidates in the race? I think in a, in a bizarre way, he, was, uh, he stood out so much in 2016 because 
it was pitted against such a terrible candidate. But now that there's a lot of other candidates in the race, I think he's having trouble at this current moment with so many candidates expanding his coalition. So I think it's a really fair question because, yeah, again, he's had trouble expanding. I'd be curious what he thinks his lane is. And now the other candidates, uh, yeah, yeah. Mayor Pete and Kamala Harris still have a shot, but it's a small shot. I'd ask him about his characterization of small dollar donors as pocket change and belittling Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders for going with small dollars, even though they, they, they outraised you. They out outraised you in general and in Q3 with just small dollars while you begged rich people for cash. And it's going to keep going down and down as you max out. So that smug uh, answer on a Snapchat interview was uh, fascinating. I asked Kamala Harris again about her criminal justice ra record, Tulsi Gabbard. Um, well, she supported uh, Ellen's embracing of George Bush just by she saying that she was the anti-war candidate. So that's weird, but maybe not a good campaign question. I'd ask, she said she backed Medicare Choice. What's that about? I thought you were for Medicare for All. Now, I'd ask Tom Steyer, uh, another candidate, about why, why, is it, why are you running? You're a Democratic mega donor when the base hates big money donors. So what is your angle? Um, I guess Julian Castro about his HUD record, Cory Booker about the New York water crisis. I don't know. The rest of these guys, again, don't really have a chance at this point. As I said, maybe Harris and Buttigieg are still in the running, but the rest, it's pretty much lights out. Um, Andrew Yang now does have a strong coalition that isn't going to go away. So I, he, he's going to have more staying power than the rest. Um, so, so that's really what I would ask. In terms of predictions, I do bet uh, Buttigieg goes uh, after Warren. That's kind of my sense of it from, uh, from, from what I've seen from interviews and stuff, the, the, the pocket change thing I just referenced, that was in response to Elizabeth Warren. He didn't address Bernie there specifically, um, of course, because they try to ignore him in the media. So um, I bet he tries to go after her from, from the right and she just doesn't care and shrugs it off. She's gonna have another solid debate performance. She's been steady, solid in all of these debates thus far. And I think this is going to be no different. Uh, I think this is really where she can shine. I also think Bernie has to have a bounce back performance in him because, look, he's the OG on all these policies. He's had, <clears throat> I think, a pretty poor, uh, pretty poor debate three, or he did have a pretty poor debate three. Part of that was was his voice, but we got to be real. People care about that stuff, plus his health issues. Um, he... Uh, he, he had a subpar debate one, it was fine, but then he had a great debate two where he was by far the best candidate on the stage. So I, I, I didn't think he had a good debate three, so now he's due for a comeback in debate four. He's got to show that he's healthy, vital, sharp, which he is. He's got something to prove. I think he'll do well. I also think Biden will implode a little bit less than he has in the past because he's riding on this Trump-Ukraine thing. The rest of them... They're just going to try to cannibalize each other. Pete and Harris will try to take each other down for that fourth slot because they're kind of neck and neck. Pete and Beto have been going at it on the campaign trail with Beto being completely in the right, by the way. Um, he's like a decent person and, and Pete is not. So that's kind of what this whole thing has been about. And I predict that it'll make it to the debate stage. And again, I think Andrew Yang is going to make a consistent effort to talk more because when you look um, at, at speaking times, he's had the least amount. And because Tulsi Gabbard has no coherent ideology except to attack other candidates, she'll probably go after Warren. It won't matter. Her campaign is seemingly run by reactionary leftist Twitter, kooky leftist Twitter, not the good kind. So uh, that, that's probably the route, even though she has all these right-wing positions all of a sudden. So um, then she won't make the next debate. And Castro's going to continue his audition for Warren's VP spot. That's, that's, that's very clear at this point. Lastly, I've been talking a lot. I am tired. <laughs> My predictions for the winners, Bernie, Warren, I bet Beto will look uh, like a better person in contrast to Mayor Pete if they go at it. He's, again, he's the wrong politician for this time, but he's, he's not a bad man, whereas Pete is ambition personified. I also bet Yang will continue to do well in the debates. His, he, his support is real. Um, big losers. <clears throat> are, are Booker and Klobuchar going to have any attention put on them. They're going to be lost in the fray, I think. Tom Steyer, people are going to be like, who, who the hell is this guy? Why is he, what's he doing up here? Why hasn't he been on the other debates? So that's what I think about what's going to happen tonight. This is a crapshoot. It's like gambling. So I'm going to be wrong on a bunch of these predictions, but we're going to see tomorrow. 
And uh, yeah, it's getting real, guys. Iowa's in February, so votes are going to be cast soon.